Daughters of Superior and Michigan join Huron. Huron joins Erie. Erie joins Ontario. And finally, sifting through a fringe of islands, the waters of Ontario converge and enter the St. Lawrence River. And here is the city of Kingston, the oldest settlement in Upper Canada. It is a city which lives side by side with history. Here are the ruins of Fort Frontenac, built in 1673 by fierce old Count Frontenac. Here, Fort Frederick was built by the British as an afterthought to the War of 1812. Just across the bay is Fort Henry, standing as solid proof that a famous border has not always been undefended. Today, old stone redoubts watch for wooden warships, while iron ships sail into Kingston Harbor. Here are the lovely residential areas of a modern Canadian city. Thriving industries, and peaceful limestone homes that still cast the charm of other days. This is a city of trees. And here, out of the trees, rises Queen's University. Every September, by train and car and bus, Queen's students come to Kingston. They go to university residences, McNeil House for the men, Banry and Adelaide Halls for the women. They go to student cooperatives, or to rooms in Kingston homes. But wherever they live, for the next eight months, their home and their life is Queens. Queens is the least local of all Canadian universities. Only 10% of her students are from the Kingston area. The other 90% come to Queens, not only from all 10 provinces, but from the United States, Latin America, the British Isles, and many other parts of the world. They come to Queens to study arts and science, engineering, medicine, commerce, physical education, nursing, or theology. At registration time, the student becomes fully aware of the variety of courses offered him. Selection is a difficult task requiring sound judgment on the part of both student and advisor. Nice to be back. Now, is this correct? Last year, you took English 2, Philosophy 1, History 5, French 2, and Geology 1? Uh, no, sir. It was uh, History 3 I took, not History 5. Oh. Uh, not the evolution of England, but the North Atlantic community. Yes. Uh, now, this year, there are certain basic requirements. English, History, and French. Well, this way. If I'm to complete my honors degree by next spring, I still need to take two lecture courses, one reading course in French, and a lecture course in Spanish. I'd hoped to plan my program this winter so that next year I could complete either the course in honors politics or the course in public administration next year. Well, I see. We should have no difficulty in arranging that. Let me see now what course... An almost unlimited vista opens before the student. For him, the calendar of courses is his introduction to the academic life of Queens. A life which is not bounded by any set area of lawns and walks, is not confined to particular buildings or rooms or labs. Geology students, for instance, will discover that the entire Kingston area is classroom and lab. The geological structure of the surrounding countryside lends itself to extensive on-the-spot study this may be one reason the graduates of Queen's School of Mining, first established in 1893, have played such an important part in opening the Canadian North. Knowledge of mining is supported by knowledge of metallurgy. Queensmen learned the art of extracting metals from ores. Or perhaps the choice is for electrical engineering, out of the whir of electric motors in labs such as this, 
grows the wine of mighty turbines and generators in the Shipshaws, the Camanos, the Niagaras of a nation whose industry is founded upon electrical energy. This mechanical engineering student is working in one of the most modern mechanical engineering buildings of any university in Canada. In engineering, as in all things at Queen's, the emphasis is not on size, but on quality. Always the student is encouraged not only to achieve proficiency in analytic thinking, but to acquire the fundamental knowledge which will enable him to recognize the human, economic and social problems of his work, both as an engineer and as a citizen.